Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Tech Talks. This is Ryan here, and this week we're going over Amplitude 4 and TRX 5. I'm going to use them to mix in the box, and we're going over different tips and tricks on how to use them and get set up. At the end of the episode, we will be giving away one of these great tools, Amplitude 4. If we get 50 live viewers, we're going to be giving away T-Rex 5 as well. We want, want to make sure that you guys are able to use this gear and um, really take your mixes to the next level. If you're not familiar with our stuff, you can use it for free in, um, in a demo mode with the custom shop. Check out our custom shop tech talks on how to do that. Um, so make sure to like and subscribe. Stay tuned to the last minute of the episode when we're going to be doing the giveaway with our Q&A. And uh, let's go ahead and dive right in here because we have quite a few things to tackle. All right. Hey, what's going on, Ray Mears, Sebastian, Skies Watcher? Thank you guys for joining in. We appreciate all you guys watching, and um, we thank you all for, uh, for being here. So let's go ahead, and we're going to first just take a listen to the mix that we're doing today. It is, um, it is a little bit metal. Um, we have done some lighter stuff in the past. If you're more familiar or if you're more into that kind of stuff, check out our other videos. Uh, but you can see I have drums, guitar, um, I have some effects, and then I have stems over here. So let's, let's go ahead and we'll start by just simply going to our preferences. Because when you do mix and master, your most important thing is going to be your buffer size. Notice I've cranked this up to 2048. Because I don't really care too much about this input and output latency. Um, during this phase, uh, you should be tracking with a lower buffer which maybe I would say 128 to 256, but mixing and mastering, you should be able to crank that as high as possible for your system. Um, I know some people have a very powerful system and they're able to go even lower during this phase, but you don't necessarily need to. And especially for those of you who aren't on a studio computer, you know, um, in a multi-million dollar studio, this is very important. Always make sure to, to throw up your buffer size there. And for Windows users, make sure you're using the ACO drivers. There are other technologies out there. MME and DirectX are mainly for video games and movies. So you want to avoid those when you're using real-time processing tools. So, all right, let's go ahead. I'm going to play this riff real quick. Oh, hide that for later. And let you guys just listen in and let a couple more people join us here. Um, make sure... You guys like and subscribe because if you guys uh, stay tuned to the end, you will get a chance to win Amplitude 4 and possibly T-Rex 5 as well. So it's definitely worth it. Um, let's go ahead and take a listen. Okay, great. So we'll, we'll take a little bit more of an in-depth listen to each part as we go through the video because we're going to hear a couple of things a couple of times. Um, so you can see I was scrolling through a couple of my presets. If you guys aren't familiar, um, the Joe Satriani gear is great stuff. Um, worth checking out. Jump on the website. This is our 5150 from it. It's a new model. It sounds really cool. And I've gotten a couple of different effects here for us to just dive through later. Um, Hard rock middle ground. I like that. We can definitely find something in the middle there. Um, particularly, I'm a metal guy, and I needed to make a quick tutorial video, and I needed to have something for our metal giveaway. So you're going to hear this song featured in our um, Amplitude Metal giveaway. Uh, if you have not jumped in there, by the way, um, anybody who signs up for our newsletter, you're going to get a copy of Amplitude Metal for free. So you're going to be able to even mimic some of these sounds today with your own setup. But let's go ahead, and we're, we're going to first talk about routing. And you're going to notice here, I have a couple of different buses. Now, not everybody uses buses, but what I use them for is to sum all my instruments together and then process them separately. So, for an example, and I'll go into this a little bit deeper and how it sounds, but this is going to be our drum bus, and I'm controlling the dynamics with this dynamo, and I'm hitting it a little hard because they're a very dynamic instrument. 
And then I'm going to um, use a quad compressor, which is going to be um, compressing each of these frequency bands a little bit differently. And you're going to see it doesn't look like much is going on up here, but it's all down there. And then I have an EQ um, P1A, which you guys, if you're familiar, it's that pull stack style, which is very cool. And it's, it's a passive EQ with a tube, um, a tube power section. So essentially what that means is some people don't even use this as an EQ. They just use it for the power tube section, which is really awesome. And it has a boost and an attenuation, um, like little hump thing that it does. And it's really cool. I'm going to go over that in a second. Um, but great. So you're going to see there is my drums. They're all routed to this bus. My bass is actually in here, but he's going to the master. I'll show you that real quick. See my kick goes to the drums. And this guy goes to the master. And this is your I.O. section. This is in every single DAW. And um, this is just going to be what you're using to route. Um, once you have everything routed, you can see my guitars go to the guitar bus. And that's where I'm able to control all of their guitar dynamics and actually EQ all the guitars at once. Um, on top of that, we have our stems. Now, if you, if you guys aren't familiar with the whole tracking phase, that then goes into the mixing phase and then goes into the mastering phase because it's kind of blended together in today's world... Uh, most people don't do all of this at once. Most people have a tracking engineer, then a mixing engineer, and then a mastering engineer. So when you do record something and you're going to send your, your mix out to somebody, um, you want to send stems usually. And you can do that with a two-track or multiple stems. And what I've done here is guitar, bass, drums, and effects. Very basic. And I'm just routing my guitar bus, bass bus, drum bus, and effects bus out here. Right? Now... I am doing a little bit of mastering or um, pseudo mastering because this isn't a track that I'm necessarily going to be um, pushing out there really hard. You know, this is this is just for the tutorial and everything, but this is going to give us a little bit of life here. And this is I'm going to automate this throughout the entire track and really show you guys how you can use it as a really cool tool. This is an awesome little um, TLA calls it a secret weapon. If he needs to show somebody what mastering is going to sound like, he'll pull this guy up and just quickly do it for him. Um, TLA is one of my favorite, um, engineers out there. So great guy. He does a bunch of different stuff, um, with T-Rex. So check out those videos. Let's see. Good question here from Steve B. Is there an envelope filter in Amplitude? There is, there is actually an envelope filter in Amplitude. There's a couple of different ones and they, they react a little bit uniquely. Uh, what I like to do with the envelope filter is push into it, right? Um, when you push into an envelope filter, it helps the the filter itself just activate a little bit harder and you can get a little bit more of a um for me a funk kind of sound and get that real deep movement in the envelope so anyway let's go ahead and we're going to jump into straight to our guitars i'm going to show you guys what it sounds like you know before we did all this what it sounds like after now all of this stuff was recorded not with the best equipment but i was able to get some great sounds by just using the in the box tools that i have Let's go ahead and we're going to listen to the rhythm guitars here. So it's a little bit messy, but what I'm doing here is I'm adding amplitude and let's go ahead and bypass that just so you can hear what the clean signal sounds like. It's not going to sound the best, but I just want you guys to hear what I was able to do. Right, so let's go ahead and we're we'll power those back on. I'm gonna go through my chain here, and I used to be one of those guys who searched through YouTube for the perfect um, metal sound, guitar tone, stuff like that. And what I've found is you really there's no secret weapon, especially when you're using amplitude. What you want to do is have a tube-based amp, and this is gonna be the Satch VM, which is a really cool module. Each one of these different sections has multiple topologies that'll give you a heavier sound or a lighter sound. So you can use three different OD ones and three different OD twos. It's really cool. Um, the mid shift is awesome, and you have two different master sections. Um, but what I'm doing here is I'm pushing into that tube amp with these distortion pedals, and I have a little noise gate here. If you guys heard, haven't heard me preach about the noise gate of hell, um, as ironic as that is, is I like to put it to about one kilohertz, and that's going to help me filter out everything else and keep my pinch harmonics and my um, aggression that I like so much about the guitar, right? So that's what this guy's doing. And then I'm pushing into my amp A. And I've actually, 
I normally default to the over screen, but I wanted to try the Satch distortion because I've heard really good things about, you know, pushing it into a tube amp. Um, I have a DS1, but this is Joe's DS1, which is going to be one of the original models that is very sought after. Um, a DS1 is a very basic distortion with just an op amp and some diodes. So that op amp really makes a difference. And this is that really cool one. So let's go ahead and we're going to listen to it without the push, right? Now, it's a pretty subtle change, but in your fingers, when you play that guitar, it really does make a difference. It makes you feel that much more comfortable, and you're, you're going that much more crazy. And you heard the difference between these, the way that these hit the amp. Actually, the overscreen was a little bit too thin for me here. I might have the tone around the same level. Um, the overscreen does need to push harder to um, match up to this DS1 because just the nature of how it works. And this tube overdrive, I didn't quite like it for the rhythm. I loved it on my melody guitar, which let's go ahead and jump into that because these guys are very similar. Or actually, let's go ahead and let's check out the cab section. Um, if you're in the cab section, you're going to see I have one mic here, right? I have a 57. If I go to my other guitar, I have a 57, but actually I have two of them. Now that's a very, it's a very subtle difference. I'm going to play the difference right here for you. Right, so you can hear there's there's actually a pretty big jump there. Um, this guy is using the tube overdrive uh, just because of the way that it hits this double dynamic. And with Amplitube, there's two different perspectives that you have. You have the guitar player's perspective, which really lies within the amp, insert, and the stomp. And when you get to the cab, you're pretty much doing the engineer's job where you can mix the different mics. And I'm going to show you how to automate that. Um, pick the different rooms. Um, you do have a lot of different mics to choose from, and I'm, I'm going to show you on the lead guitar. I used a very specific mic that I think you guys will like, and you can you can switch out the speakers for each of the cabinets. So if you if you can't find the perfect tone messing with your EQ, you can change the actual um, speaker, which is an interesting thing to do, um, especially because you can't quite do that very easily in real life. All right, nothing on the rack, and I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to save this pedal board, just as. IK Tech Talk pedal board one. So now I can recall that at any time, nice and easy. You see I have metal basics, I have a slash pedal board, a bunch of different stuff that you can just, bam, I know what I want on my pedal board and I can load it. And you can load that into stomp A and B. Um, for the amp, you can actually go ahead and if you wanted to use the two different instances like I did, but not necessarily copy and paste because you want to do a unique thing each time, you can save this as a specific metal setting. All right, and then next time you load that model, you have it right there. It's going to pull up all of these settings. And you can do that pretty much for everything here. You have a rack setup, um, and then you have your general preset, which is going to be every little detail. All right, so very cool. Kind of interesting how you can just, you know, pull one section. Uh, guitar players are very fond of their pedal board, but they might like to switch amps all the time, and that's what that's cool for. So let's jump to the lead guitar. This is actually one of my favorite tones. I'm going to show you um, one, one thing that I did with automation for that, for that um, I want to say Dimebag influenced um, chugging piece right here. Let's play it. Now, what I did there was I automated on one guitar, a phaser, which I believe is here. You can see the phaser goes on here because bypass is at 100 and then bypass is off there. And that's actually going to go on my insert chain. So if you guys aren't too familiar with why you'd put it on the insert chain, it's an interesting to look, thing to look up and it makes a huge difference in your tone than putting it on the stomp A. I think it pushes too hard when you put it in the stomp A and it affects the tone a little bit um, too much for me. I like it in the insert. Um, but you can do whatever. And see, that's actually a stomp in a rack which is an Amplitude 4 thing. Um, if, you, if you've used, used Amplitude 3, you're not familiar with this, which I, I personally load these all the time. You have a bunch of cool stuff. 
um, just to mess with. So let's go to our lead guitar here. Or sorry, sorry, let me show you guys that automation real quick because I want to show you it on screen for the room. As our left guitar plays through this piece, it's going to get a little bit more roomy. And as our right guitar plays through this piece, he's going to have phaser, right? So check that, check this out. Right, that's, that's an interesting thing to do because I wanted to kind of push it out into a space, but I didn't want to load another reverb. I didn't want to have another track or anything like that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a really, it's a cool thing to do for, uh, I like the morphing sound option, but um, this guy actually, he, you notice he jumps up really quick. It's because of the scale of the, the values here, but let's solo that guitar just so you can hear it one more time. All right, one more time. Right, because I don't, I actually don't want any room for my chugs. If you guys aren't familiar with um, setting up metal tones, I normally just use a 57. That's it. Um, but if I have to, or if I want to go the extra level, which I've done for this lead guitar, I've gone ahead and... Um, put two different mics, one that I really love for high end, and that is the Ribbon 160. And it's a little bit pushed off to the side, but you can mess around and find the perfect spot. You notice it's in a 3D area. I've given mic one a lot of room, so I've moved it away from the, the, the actual speaker. Let's go ahead and play that so you can hear what I'm talking about. <laughs> Right, so I, I normally wouldn't put a mic that far from the cabinet, but I liked it in this particular instance in the way that it fits in the mix. Maybe not necessarily how it fits in the solo, but you guys, um, it's dangerous to solo things sometimes. Um, you don't know how it fits in the mix. It might sound great on its own, but it might have too much character that's going to um, muddy up another instrument, right? So let's go ahead and we'll do that with the ribbon too. All right, we'll, we'll do that one more time with 57 so you can hear it. So for, for me, that's one of my favorite little nuances of Amplitube is when you want a really roomy tone is move that mic away. Um, and then you can also add some room tone here, which I've done. And you can see I've leveled only just a little bit of that ribbon because I don't want too much of it. I'm going to here. Let's let's crank that up so you guys can hear it. <laughs> So I like a little bit of a blend right there. And let's listen to what that room sounds like. So it's just a little bit of nuance, right? And um, normally I have a send for my reverb, but I've decided to keep it all in Amplitube. So all these guys have their reverbs built into Amplitube. I'm not doing any T-Rex processing on the actual guitar tracks. I am doing processing on the actual guitar bus. But let's check out our last guitar here, and that's going to be our melody guitar. I'll play you the riff in context first, so you guys know what I'm talking about. So you can hear that that this is my melody guitar, right? Let's play it. Okay, cool. So you can kind of see what I've done there. So I'm using a 5150, the SJ50, which is their newest modeling of the 5150, which... This is one of the greatest models in all history. I'm not afraid to say it. Um, this, this is a great little thing. And 
secret for metal guys you don't need that much distortion look at it's at four but it sounds so heavy and that's because when you layer and layer and layer distorted guitars they start muddying each other up you start clouding the mix and i'm straying away from that you know i am pushing into it with the tube overdrive but i'm not going too crazy on the gain also not going too crazy on the eq if you push too hard on the eq you you might mess up some other signals but this is the guitar player's choice um, you normally don't have an option to mess with this, right? The guitar player normally dials in his tone. That's it. You then come in from this section, and um, I see a good question. Um, where is it? I'm doing lots of drop A standard doomy stuff. Would you still recommend a 57? And that's the whole thing is maybe you need a 57 and a different speaker if it sounds super muddy. Um, if you want to go super light, you can try maybe a 441 um, or sorry, uh, 414 condenser. Um, there's, there's a lot of different things that you can try and the custom shop will let you try all of them to find the perfect situation for yourself. I like to start with 57. It's a, it's a great starting point. And that, that's my whole point is that it, it gets you going to pick the most specific thing for your mix, right? Um, another tip that I like to, to follow is say it out loud before you do it. You know, if you're, if you're listening to your bass and it sounds muddy, you know, say it out loud. You know, I want to reduce some mud here. I want to improve the clarity. Um, that always helps me. Um, I see somebody mentioned panning. I am actually panning these hard. And these are just double tracked guitars. If you're not familiar with double tracking, you're going to play the same thing twice and pan them left and right to give it a bigger feel. Some people like to copy and paste their same tracks and add some kind of phase um, timing or pitch alterations to make them sound bigger, which is cool if you don't have the artist in to do a second track, but personally, I like to play them just two times. So, um, let's go ahead and we're going to jump into the next little Amplitude 4 guy, which is going to be our, our bass, which is something I've actually kind of taken away from TLA. I don't want to say stole, but I've heard it um, specifically from him on our last NAM. Um, presentation and what he likes to do is he'll have one chain of a clean bass amp and then the other chain is going to be a distorted sound so let's go ahead and play that back before I even let you guys know what's going on that was just kind of a hint Hold on, guys. I have to announce this. We just hit 50 concurrent viewers. So the winner of today's giveaway will both receive Amplitude 4 and T-Rex 5. That's going to be pretty much everything from this video. I mean, outside of the Amplitude Satch stuff. But um, pretty much everything you guys are going to need to get started. And you're going to have Amplitude Metal completely free for signing up to the newsletter, which will get, which has a 5150 you can use to mimic these tones. Um, so Congrats, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. We're really happy that we hit that. And um, let's go ahead and just take another listen. I didn't mean to interrupt, but I'm going to show you guys the chain as I play it this time. This is our distorted chain. I've got a tube screamer, which is what TLA says his secret is on bass. And if you look at it, a little bit of gain boosted here compared to my clean, which is just a little bit of bass because that's what I want. I want this to be my body and this to be my sticking out little nuance that you hear the bass. Um, look at the cab page. There's, guess what? A 57. Very basic. I want it for the distorted sound. And then on the other cab, like Peter says, or sorry, like our mod says, uh, we have two amp, we have two different mics here and we have the dynamic 20, which is going to be the RE20, the actually the mic that I'm talking into right now, which is a little beefy and the Velo eight, which is actually super beefy. I like to use it as a sub mic essentially, especially on bass. So great. Let's go ahead and we'll, we'll take a listen. I'm going to try and um, turn things on and off so you can hear what I'm doing exactly. But this is, this is the whole concept here is that I have a clean bass tone and then I have a distorted bass tone to push it out and really push its way through the mix so you can hear it. And the very last thing that I've done on my clean tone is add some DI. Everybody needs some DI on their, on their bass. Um, for me, it's always a rule. I reach for it first. Um, let's go ahead and take a listen. I'm going to just move some things around. So you can hear right there, that's my distorted tone. Um, you do enter the contest by just sticking around to the very end. 
and we're going to ask a simple question, um, nothing uh, knowledge based. So just stick to the end and we're going to use your IK Multimedia username to give you guys the products. So make sure you have an IK account. Go ahead and create one now, pause the video and come back. Um, but yeah, so that was going to be my, that's my distorted bass. And let's go ahead and I'm going to solo my non distorted bass right here. So let's mute these guys. So you can hear that's my that's just my bass tone, the clean bass tone, and then you heard the distorted bass tone. And now let's hear the completely DI track. And I want to tell you guys this bass is probably uh, two hundred dollars at most. Um, I tried not to use the best gear because I, I like I like to watch videos where people are just using the stuff that I might have at home. So nothing, none of my gear here has gone over the five hundred dollar limit, honestly. That's that's the thing. Um, if you have the right interface and you have the right tools, you can really make a guitar sound like it's way over its price tag. Um, I used the Axe IO and I was able to dial in a really nice little middleman. So the DI isn't too horrible. You guys heard that right there. Let's play it. But here I just fatten it out so much. It's actually kind of hidden in the mix. It's a little. It's negative eighteen on on the on the dB. Nothing in my rack because I, normally I would compress but I wanted to compress it afterwards with T-Rex. So, let's jump into the next little detail that I'm gonna be going over, which is gonna be um, <clears throat> automation. So, I've automated a couple of different things. I talked about how I did the faders earlier, but on the master track, and before I dive into all the, the little details of what I did, um, this is the most important thing to me, is it's, it's a little bit of pseudo mastering. I'm not going too crazy, but I'm, automating this throughout the entire process and watch my transient knob and it, I thought when I was originally doing this I was like it can't make too big of a difference but oh man the transient knob on your fills is going to bring your drums to the front and center and then push them back when you don't need them so check it out Now let's check that out without the one at all. I'm going to turn it off completely because I want you guys to hear the difference. Right? So to me, huge difference. My Or to some people, it might be a subtle, subtle change, but that transient knob, it just, it's amazing. I'm going to play it one more time. here it really makes a difference <clears throat> and I use it a couple of different ways too I've, I've got all my automation tracks showing for you guys and um, there's a couple of different knobs on it you notice bass push or bass punch and body are going to be um, kind of interchangeable so when I push my body it's gonna be for this double kick drum here to kind of bring the whole mix pushed out I'm gonna suck out some body for that phasery guitar part and then push it back just a little bit afterwards um, normally when I subtract body, I'm going to add bass punch. Bass punch is more about transients, compression. Body is more about EQ and frequency response. So let's go ahead and just take a listen and try and, and listen for that body right there. And I'm going to switch over in a second to show you where the bass punch comes in, which is actually right here. So just take a listen.
Now, I specifically reduced the body and increased the bass punch because I have so many guitars going on there and they're kind of muddying each other up. Um, I'm going to jump into a little bit of T-Rex now since we're at that point and I'll start with the guitars. Um, and Peter actually called this out a little bit earlier. I'm not cutting off my guitars too low. I'm going at 47. Normally I like to go around 100 hertz and that cuts out anything that my, um, my bass is going to be doing. I don't want my guitar chugs to be fat and huge. I want my bass chugs to be fat and huge. You know, it's going to back up the guitar. Um, that doesn't mean I want a thin guitar, but that means I don't want to muddy up my signal. And watch my compressor here. It's going a little crazy. I like to stick around minus 3 dB. Um, some people don't like to squash their signal. Remember to always um, balance your gain. When it's on and off, it should be the same volume, but you should have a slightly different um, tonality to the character. So I'm going to turn these on and off as the track plays. And let's go ahead and play something like the chorus here. So you can really hear what I'm doing. Now, again, this is going to be processing on the guitar bus. Right now, before I play this, I just want to thank you guys again. We're going to be giving away T Rex 5 and Amplitude 4 at the very end of this video because we hit 50 viewers. Thank you guys. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe. We're going to be doing giveaways every week um, Tuesday on YouTube, Wednesday on YouTube at 4 p.m., and every other day on Instagram Live. We will be putting out a, a um, list of when we're going to be doing all of our streams weekly. So make sure to follow our Instagram, I Came Multimedia, for that posted list. We'll also post it on Facebook and in our newsletter. So if you haven't subscribed, um, doing so actually gets you Amplitude Metal. So definitely do that. So let's go ahead and take a listen to this guitar. I'm going to solo it and just show you guys what it's doing. Let's actually, let's go back here and just get some, some heavier stuff so I can really show you guys. So there, you guys can actually see, I'm, I'm not even touching negative one here, and I do slam it on some other tracks, but it's not necessarily here. Not necessary here. This is the Black 76, and if you're not familiar, it's a limiting amplifier, but it uses FET technology, um, which is going to be a little bit different than other compressors. It's going to give me some color and warmth outside of just controlling the dynamics, which is really cool. Um, great. So that's my guitar bus. Um, again, subtract under 100 hertz, you, you heard no difference, or very minor difference, uh, if, depending on what you're listening on, when I went from 40 to 100 hertz, except it improved the clarity a little bit. It prevents the, the boom from building, right? Um, and this, I like to go f around 4K. It depends on the guitar. It depends on the mix and all the other instruments. But around 4K, you're going to get some bite out of the, gu the guitar. And here I have a cut at 12K to really clear up some space for my cymbals. Because the whole point of mixing is really, for me, I'm going to use some mostly subtractive EQ to add space for all of these instruments to stand out and you can hear them all on their own. And then panning and volume to kind of put them in place. Volume for me is distance. You know, it's quieter, it's farther away, it's louder, it's closer to you. Um, left and right, imagine you're at a venue. You normally see a guitar player on the left, you see a guitar player on the right, singer in the center, stuff like that. Um, but there are a bunch of different cheat sheets out there. They're good starting points, but again, starting points. 76 is definitely the standard. I love how many people jumped in when they saw the 76. That's beautiful. It's a really cool little detail. Um, there are some other great compressors, and I'm going to jump to the drums now so I can show you that. Um, on these drums, which by the way, if anybody noticed, I'm going to go over this when we ask the question later. This is all Moto Drum. This is not a live drummer. Um, if you guys haven't seen the... Uh, the tech talk where I went over motor drum. This is a physically modeled drum kit. It's um, hybrid samples and physical modeling. So I'm able to change all these different nuances, um, change where the snare is being played and all these different things. So you can really hear, it sounds like a real drum set. Um, most metal is a little bit robotic and I tried to avoid that here. So let's go ahead. We're going to listen to just the drums and I'm going to start turning on and off some of these effects. I'm going to tell you what I did after.
All right, so there you go. You can hear it. It doesn't sound fake to me. You know, some people have a very good ear for this stuff. Uh, I've been writing drums for a long time, and I I wrote out all of these drums. This is actually going to be my hi hat automation control. When this is up, this is completely released, and when it's down, it is completely closed. You can see I kind of just close it a couple of times to give it some nuance. Um, like I was saying, you can change where the toms are being played. This right here is allowing my toms to kind of hit the outside and then a little bit in the center. Because if you hit a tom in the center, it's going to be more beefy. If you hit it at the edge, it's going to be a little bit more thin, worn out. And that's what I kind of did for that fill to not make it sound like a machine gun. Right? So that doesn't sound bad to me. And I actually tried to overdub these drums, and I, I didn't like the outcome. I honestly, I stuck with just Moto Drum for this entire track, and I didn't do too much to it. Um, so let's go ahead and let's take a, ch a look at that chain that we have on our drum bus. And let's actually go ahead and I'll turn everything off first so you can hear that. Uh, if you're not familiar with Ableton Live, you can control G. It's going to group everything, right? So let's go ahead and we'll listen to that fill. Sounds good, sounds good. Um, rules to me are meant to be broken sometimes. But um, I'll explain to you what I'm doing and how and why. So the Dynamu right here is going to be a very mute compressor, which is really cool and very um, useful in a lot of different situations. Uh, preferably, I like it on vocals. But um, what I'm using it here for is to control the dynamics of an insanely dynamic drum set. So look how hard this gain reduction goes. Yeah, I, I tricked you guys there. It doesn't really move that much at all. Um, I like to push my input and mess with my threshold. That's how I kind of got this value. Um, and you can see I've got just a basic attack speed. Some people like super fast for a very slam hit and then super slow for a more boomy, bigger hit. And similar with release time. But I, I stuck with the basics here. I didn't go too crazy. And then from there, I went into my my um, quad compressor, which go ahead and check out how this is moving. Good question, Jan. Can you automate where the head is being hit? That's exactly what I'm doing on that first fill. If you scroll back just a little bit, you'll see the automation that I went from. On my rack toms, I don't care too much about a center hit because I kind of want them to be a little bit thin. And then for the floor toms, I want them to hit more towards the center. I want them to be a little bit more boomy, but not too boomy. So you can control that with just moving that around, right? And the snare, yes, very subtle, subtle variations are really cool, especially when you do a fill. Um, if you notice, most drummers, they try to hit in the center always, but of course you can't do that because we're human. And that almost gives it life, not always being perfect. But I like to go from the outside of the snare to the inside of the snare during fills. It kind of gives it more of a, an envelope to it. Um, but yeah, let's go Let's go to our EQ here next. And notice I'm not doing too too much moves here, but I am, I am giving a low frequency boost around three and also some attenuation to give it, it, it does this little hump thing. If you're not familiar with... Um, Pull textile EQs, it's definitely something to look up. Like I was saying before, this is completely passive EQ, so it's really not going to um, color your tone too much on the EQ side except for what it's doing frequency-wise. Uh, but the tube amplifier in it, some people just use this as an input and output control. Um, so we have our high frequencies. They're attenuated a little bit because they're a little piercing, but I also have them pushed because right next to 10K is where I want the clarity. So let's play that, and I'll turn it on and off. Pultics are butter on the mix, 100%. Uh, but for what I did here, it's very basic. You, you probably can't hear too much depending on what you're listening on. Um, but this is going to be a post-EQ. And some people like to put their EQ before the compressor, some after. Um, 
what I like to do is do subtractive EQ before the compressor and additive EQ after, right? Because you want to suck out what you don't like from the sound, compress it, get it to where it should be. And then after, if you need a little bit of boost, you can add some EQ back in. Um, you can always go for um, additive EQ before the compressor to really have some, some harmonics hit the compressor specifically hard. Some engineers do that. But this is just my overall rule. I like to do subtractive first, additive after. Um, you know, you never have to follow any rules. Like I was showing you earlier, my drums aren't particularly um, perfect when it comes to matching the gain in and out of my compressor. But, so let's go ahead and we'll check out the next step in this mix. Which, by the way, guys, we're giving away Amplitude 4 and T-Rex 5 because we hit the 50 viewers. Make sure to like and subscribe. Stay tuned to the very end. We're going to ask a very simple, simple um, question at the end and give away this copy for you guys um, can you play moto drums from hardware kit sets yes um, here um, I'll go over moto at the very end of the video when I ask the question because I do want to show you guys some stuff it's one of my favorite programs I used to love superior drummer and I still do um, I still use easy drummers from time to time but my laptop doesn't have much space and the physical modeling really helps me out same thing with moto bass I use it because it it not only sounds great but it doesn't take up that much room and I can do so much with it. Uh, I'm a, a mini madman. I love just tweaking every little tiny CC control that I can. And that's what's going to give you life. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and just recap real quick. We use the equal on our drums to allow for, um, now let's pull it up, to allow the shells of the drums to all blend together but not get too muddy. So let's look at my kick first. I'm going to have some presence in the kick in the 70s, 60 hertz around there. And then I'm going to overall, you can see this is one of my favorite things about equal. Let me close you up on that. Um, so on, on equal, what you can see is there is a gain control, right? And then I'm going to go from 125 hertz to 20 hertz. And I'm just going to take it down 2.7 dB. And then on top of that, around 150, where my base lives, I'm going to subtract. I'm going to minus 4 dB, which you can see is a little bit more than minus 4, because the way that the frequencies interact with each other as you EQ is shown here, and that's beautiful. That's my favorite thing. Um, oops, didn't mean to move that. But this is around 3K. This is going to be my beater. It's going to just help it stand out a little bit. It doesn't need that much help. I just left it there. You know, I didn't boost my highs, barely boost my lows. I mainly did cutting. And then I have an a black 76 just to kind of control the kick drum maybe add a little bit of harmonics to it right so let's go ahead I'm just gonna solo that play that for you guys and um, yeah at the, at the end of this episode um, we'll, we'll go over moto drum so oops sorry about that guys um, I have been hitting my computer pretty hard today All right, so <clears throat> see my equals still open back here. Um, all right, cool. So go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and talk about Amplitude 4 and T-Rex 5. We're going to be giving away these at the very end of the episode. Let's go ahead. I'm going to jump to this camera real quick. That's why I correct this. Um, so if you guys aren't familiar with Tech Talks, this is one piece of a daily streaming series. We do it every day on Instagram and Tuesdays and Wednesdays on YouTube. So stay tuned to the end. Ask a simple question. All we need is your IK username. So create one now if you don't have one. And um, we're going to go over, we're, we're going to throw the serial number straight into your account. You don't have to do anything extra. Um, so just make sure you have an account and we're going to go from there. The cat is actually right there. He was going a little crazy earlier. We'd like to see more of Amplitude T-Rex with different styles. Okay. Um, definitely throw a comment and let me know what styles you guys like. I picked metal because I've been doing mainly laid back kind of stuff recently. And I know not everybody's about that. Um, I wanted to also, we had a couple of users specifically ask for metal. So this is also kind of just, you know, helping out, you know, everybody who watches every week. That's what I really want to do. I want, you know, you guys who are watching, you guys are supposed to have, you know, the best experience. That's what I'm trying to, you know, get for you guys there. So now we have my session back open. Oop. So, sorry about that. Let's jump back here. Um, okay, great. 
metal or indie post rock definitely throw it in the comment box so we don't forget but thank you for throwing that in there different guitar styles um cool cool awesome um if you guys haven't seen the moto drum video definitely check that out as well i'm scrolling through some comments let's just do a quick q a while while we wait for everything to go down um thank you guys for, for tuning in again uh let's see the orange amp pack. Ooh, I love the orange amp pack. Uh, the tiny terror, like, um, like our mod is saying is one of the coolest amps. Uh, it gives you a nice little kind of unique s sound to it, which is awesome. Um, it's actually one that I wanted to own in real life, uh, which isn't too expensive, you know, and it's super easy to carry. I love it. Um, mixing vocals I was, I was actually going to do, um, a mix of a Red Hot Chili Peppers and RX Bandit style mix today, but we went with metal instead because I had a very specific couple of users reach out for it. Um, clean Funk Pop, I love those. Uh, trap Music, Big Room House. Um, that might That's not exactly my um, area of expertise, but don't get me wrong, uh, we have plenty of employees here, and uh, I'll see if I can grab somebody who would be willing to put something like that together for you guys. Um, sorry, I have been having trouble with um, specifically Ableton Live, but Ableton Live is a great program. Don't get me wrong. Um, melodic pop, pop, rock. Great. Synth wave. Cool, cool, cool. Um, the 90s, there's some amazing metal that came out in the last 20 years. 100%. Okay. Um, no, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I'm a pretty big metal guy, but I do also like uh, pretty much any genre of music. So I'm, I'm all for checking out, um, putting something funk together for you guys. Melodic pop rock might not be my forte, but we, like I said, we could try and get somebody else and, and going over this kind of stuff. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, if you guys aren't familiar, Dave Kirshner. Uh, he's a great guy. He's always on our Instagram live and he's always talking about how he uses different gear. Um, he does a lot of work with the backup singers that worked with Pink Floyd, which is really cool. And for female vocals, that 100%, that, that is a way to go. Um, great. So um, is there a way to mix the song in T-Rex 5 or is that all about mastering? Um, T-Rex 5 standalone is mainly about mastering. Um, you can put your stems in there. Like I was saying earlier about the stems, you can see I have them right there at the bottom of my track. Um, oh man, this guy is not liking me right now. I uh, wonder what I did to break him. This, this was happening with, with all my sessions earlier. Um, but let's go ahead one second. All right, guys, while I have you here, 
I figured let's jump into the giveaway and let's let's go ahead and I'll ask the question. Um, once you guys have your answer, go ahead and throw it in the chat box and let us know what is your favorite mixing tool. We want to know whether it's analog or if it's a plug-in, what is your favorite mixing tool? What do you reach for the most? Let us know what you reach for and maybe why you reach for it if you'd like. At the very end of, <laughs> at the very end of this episode, we're giving away Amplitude 4 and T-Rex 5 for that answer, so make sure it counts and jump in the chat. Um, if you already have Amplitude 4 and T-Rex 5, please do not participate. We will do other giveaways for you in the next coming weeks, but we don't do any substitutions during these videos. So um, definitely uh, throw your answer in the chat box. Let's get this conversation going. And um, let's see exactly what you guys, you know, use for mixing. And, you know, how, how do you guys approach approach the process. You can throw any of these answers in there. The winner does need to give us their username for their IK Multimedia. Um, uh, your IK Multimedia username. So if you don't have one, go ahead and create one now. Uh, 1176 style compressor. Interesting. Neuron. Okay, okay, okay. I see some isotope. Isotope's great. Ableton Live is great. Awesome. Saturation Addict. How do you use your saturation? What do you use it for? I actually wanted to bring this up earlier is I have saturation on my uh, bass drops and also on my on my bass a little bit for adding harmonics specifically for smaller speakers. I don't know if you guys have heard about that, but smaller speakers can't really replicate, you know, 60 hertz or under. But when you saturate your basses, you can kind of expand your frequency response and get more push out of uh, out of some smaller stuff. What do you guys think about that? Ooh, kilohertz multipass. Love the innovation creativity thing. Interesting. Okay, great. Oh, that's right. That's right. I actually, on this mix, I wanted to show you guys. I'm trying to jump back into it, but unfortunately, this is um, this is unrelated to my IK stuff. This is more about the Ableton Live setup. But um, I did use a saturator on my reverb for my snare. My snare is going to a reverb, and I wanted that reverb to kind of... Uh, not get in the way of my main snare sound. And to do that, I saturated it. And that gives more clarity to the snare in the center in the front. Have you guys heard about that before? I, I've honestly recently watched a couple of different Mix with the Master videos, and I picked up that little technique, and I used it today just to show you guys how, it could, uh, how you could use it. And if you heard my reverb a little bit earlier, go back to the video if you haven't. Um, it's a very very little nuance tool that you can use to bring some subtle clarity to your mix. You can do that with vocals, you can do that with pretty much anything, wouldn't do it to bass. Um, not a big fan of bass with huge amounts of reverb. Um, ooh, I see a good question here. I also have the MTMs, what are your settings with them? I actually go to calibration and it really depends on my reference track. What I like to do is say I'm mixing metal say I want to pick the reference track for that metal genre that I'm doing and once I have it I'm gonna play it through the speakers I know what that track should sound like in my mind so I change the speakers to sound that way and you normally don't need to do too much but you do have high pass and low pass controls on the MTMs um, I do normally cut them off at either 40 Hertz 50 Hertz or 60 Hertz depending on the genre um, they are not subs so they don't necessarily hit like 30 and super low but if your mix sounds good on the MTMs, they should pretty much sound good anywhere. Um, they're very revealing. Uh, they might not make your music sound amazing right off the bat, which these KRKs do immediately. The second you play something off the KRKs, they sound cool, they sound great. But sometimes I hear things on my MTMs because of how um, neutral and transparent they are. So that's actually really cool. Um, great. So. Sounds like we had a bunch of great different little answers there. Uh, let's let my mod get a little bit more um, time so he can pick somebody. Uh, Lurson Mastering Console, if you haven't watched, we did actually do a Tech Talks on that and how to use it from Mac to um, iOS and vice versa, which is awesome for the car test. If you guys aren't, I'm sure everyone's familiar with the car test by now. It's, uh, it's a pretty popular technique, I'd have to say. Um, but yeah, so... Awesome. We're going to be giving away a copy of Amplitude 4 and T-Rex 5 at the very end of this episode. Arc 3 is going to take your MTMs to the next level. I had to jump on that comment. Um, there's also virtual monitoring, which is the best part about Arc for me. I like to virtually monitor on NS10s because I've never 
owned a pair, but I've been in plenty of studios that have them. And it's a pretty good reference point. You know, I like to throw them in there and not only use arc to correct my room, which I'm in a loft, you can see it's not the most ideal environment. I have a lot of reverb from the outside of my room coming back in here. Um, and that, that just clears it all up. I'm not making my mix decisions based on my room, which could have bass buildup or attenuation due to the different corners. And you can have different nodes and different things like that. Um, really, the MTMs, they, they've made mixing much more fun for me. And the fact that I can find what I need to find super quick and just make it sound really cool and then use the whatever other speakers I have to really double check my work. And it always seems to translate. Um, ooh, another good one. How much mid-side EQing do you use? I don't often use much, but what I've heard and what I've learned in the past is that I like to use it for, um, say you have a really wide guitar track or really wide vocal track and you wanted to add a little bit of bass to it, but you don't wanna completely override the mix. Use, add a little bit of bass to the middle and leave the sides a little bit where they are and it'll give your, your center image a little bit more prominence and kind of make things stand out a little bit. Um, you know, it's, it's not, not an always thing that you need to do, but I've found that if I'm looking for something specific, you know, if I, my mix just isn't sitting in the center right, that's always a thing I reach for. Um, awesome. So let's go ahead. We'll get any other questions you guys have, throw them in there. Make sure to throw a comment in the video and like, and subscribe. Let us know what you guys want to see in the next coming videos. Um, and it looks like we will have a winner in a couple of seconds. Ooh, I see some people like tape saturation. Would anybody be interested in a tape uh, machines demo on, on Tech Talks? I was gonna I was gonna do it today, but um, I wanted to really separate the process of mixing, mastering, and tracking because a lot of people don't really know. You know, back in the day, you'd record with a tracking engineer. All those tracks then get sent into a mix session, and then that mix session is then sent to a mastering session afterwards. You know, you track it to get it as clear as possible. Then you mix it to make sure all the instruments have their own place and they all stand in good, you know, the levels are right. Um, remember, volume is distance. Lower is farther away. And then um, closer is louder. And left and right, free up some space. If you're double tracking guitars, I like to go... Um, a little bit hard left and right. I'll go probably about 40 if my range is 50. And if it's 100, I'll probably go 75. I never like to go full LCR. Um, let's see. Looks like I have a couple more questions. Awesome. Have the full tape collections. Beautiful. Uh, they do a lot of stuff under the hood. And I wanted to mention that too. Some of these modules are very simple simple schematics. And simple schematics meaning like they don't have too many things going on underneath them that make that give them the heart and soul but a tape machine it takes a lot to really mimic the integrity and the feel of those tapes and it's it's really crucial um that that sound is perfect right and we didn't want to sacrifice anything for it so when you do use the tapes i i would suggest bouncing or freezing if you have to if you're running low on cpu i've been able to run multiple depending on my buffer size and the system being used <laughs> Aha, Peter. Sorry. Um, ooh, okay. Something strange homemade that I do works for me. I EQ the final master through VLC player and record the output. All right. I can't say I've heard about that one. Um, but if you if you did want to make a really unique sound, I have the Axe I.O. here. There's a reamp output, and what I do for it all the time is those guys looking for lo-fi sound, I'll send my any of my instruments, drums, bass, vocals, through a little speaker, and then record it in a huge room, and it sounds really awesome. So not exactly what you're saying, but something along those lines. Um, do you limit in stages, or do you prefer to use a single limiter? Um, I don't normally reach for limiters too often, and if I do, I'll just use one. And normally I'll reach for the one that's built into the tool that I'm using. So if I'm using, say, the precision comp limiter, which I used for that snare smack, um, I'll just throw the limiter on there to make sure it doesn't overload anything. The stealth limiter, however, if you throw it on your master bus, it's super transparent and it's going to allow you to make sure you don't go over any certain peaks and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, those, that's great. So it actually, it looks like we do have a winner here. And I, I did go a little bit over time, so we'll, we'll come back and we'll do a lot more mixing with T-Rex and Amplitude. I'm really glad you guys liked it this week. Um, but 
Awesome. So let's announce our winner here. And I'm going to try and pronounce this. My apologies if I mess it up. Our winner is Feeble. That is F-I-I-E-B-L-E. So go ahead and shoot your username into the chat box. And then once we have your username, we'll throw it straight into your IK account. Thank you, Soul Factor. We're very glad you guys joined in and jumped in the conversation. We definitely appreciate you know, all, all of you guys. And we want to make sure we give back as much as we can, especially while everyone's stuck at home. We want to make sure you guys have all the tools that you need to make music and you guys don't get stuck doing so. Um, so congratulations, uh, Feeble. You just won yourself Amplitude 4 and T-Rex 5, and we hit 50 concurrent viewers today, so that was why we gave away so much. Um, if we did hit 100 viewers, which we were very close to doing, we would have given away even more. So tell your friends, like and subscribe, and tune in every week. We're going to be trying to give away as much as we can to you guys. We want it in your hands. And for those who don't win, we have a couple different promos. I'll go ahead and list those off for you guys. Um, Amplitude Metal is completely free right now if you sign up for the newsletter. That actually ends pretty soon. Um, we also have 73% off of Amplitude 4, T-Rex 5, Mirroslav Philharmonic 2CE, and Sample Tank 4 SE. That actually ends today. And the last promo we have going on is buying a pair of iLoud micro monitors and getting T-Rex 5 or a pair of iLoud MTMs and getting a uh, T-Rex 5 Deluxe. So that's extended. Not sure when that ends. So definitely... I would jump in as soon as possible if, if you're looking for a tool to not only craft your mixes, but then also to go in the box and take them to the next level. What an easy username. Thank you so much for making that easy for us. <laughs> so yeah, all of you, definitely go back in the video if you guys missed the actual lesson and um, use all the different tools that I, that I showed off. You can trial them all, and if you're not sure how to trial, we have an FAQ on it. We also have a tech talk going over how to do that. So it's going to let you get a bunch of different, a bunch of time with a bunch of different modules, and really let you experience the product on your mixes because that's what we want. We don't want you guys to buy something, realize you don't need it. We want you to buy something and fall in love with it. You know, you can hear I'm, I'm still talking. <laughs> well, I, I could talk for days about our stuff, and um, that's because it really it hits my ear and it makes my job that much easier. Um, but thank you guys again for tuning in. Um, every day we're going live on Instagram at 4 p.m. And Tuesdays and Wednesdays we'll be here on YouTube. We are going to start a live streaming schedule. Uh, so check out all the links in the promotion in the description and sign up to our newsletter. They're going to be doing a, a schedule in there. So thank you again, everybody, for tuning in. It's about the end of our times. And thank you again, or congratulations again, Feeble, for, uh, for winning Amplitude 4 and T-Rex 5. And... Thanks again, guys. Enjoy the rest of your week and definitely tune in for the rest of our live streams if you didn't win something today. So um, awesome. Cheers, guys. Enjoy the rest of your week.